All kinds of basketball there for you this afternoon. Matt, I've seen you take a few um, errant shots. Errant? Into the wastebasket. Errant? <laughs> you know what I got right here? I have to rebound because the basket's near my desk, right? What do you got? This is not a basketball, but a baseball. You know the diameter of a baseball, Kathy? Share it, please. No, I have no idea. It's basically three inches. Mm -hmm. There was hail the size of baseballs coming down in Wiley, Texas. We've got the video to prove it. And that's wow. the sound of me just bouncing it on the floor. Let me show you the video. Look at this and listen. It broke through those windows, just completely trashed the Venetian blinds and the furniture, as you can see. Came through the windows? Through the window. Well, look at it. It's baseball size and maybe even bigger. Look at that. See how big they are? And harder than a baseball, too, maybe. And colder. It's actually creating some hail fog. The hail cools the air and creates fog when it's not windy. But look at that stuff just bouncing around like that. Truly, truly amazing going down. Look at that. So, again, the size of a baseball. Now, let's talk about hail sizes I will, in just a second. I want to show you it's coming our way. We've got rain rolling in. No hail today. We may see some on Thursday. It won't be baseball size. We get the little tiny pea size hail. But here's a little chart of hail size comparison and updraft speed. Because think about it. Hail has a lot of weight when it gets to be this big. So it takes a lot of vertical air, air going upward to keep it aloft. And so to get baseball sized hail, you basically have to have 80 mile an hour winds going upward to keep the hail going up. That's big. And here's the diameter. That's three inch diameter. What about softball sized hail? You need winds going upward at 100 miles an hour to keep a softball sized hailstone aloft and in the air. That's four and a half inch diameter hail. And the biggest hail ever recorded was in, I think, Vivian, South Dakota. It was in South Dakota several years ago. It was eight inches in diameter. I don't have an eight inch diameter uh, ball to show you here, but nonetheless, it would have required updraft speeds of at least 150 miles an hour and probably bigger to support eight inch diameter hail. So pretty wild weather down in Wiley, Texas. That's northeast of Dallas with that large hail. All right, here's our weather sky show from our reserve sky cam today. And well, somewhat ominous looking, nothing like, of course, what they're seeing in Texas. We've had a few showers and there are some golfers out there, Kathy. It's an intrepid Northwest golfers, a little bit of rain. Ha, ah, that's nothing. Bring on the links, right? Nice though. There's usually not too many people out there you can get around quickly. So here's storm system number one, bringing us the rain showers tonight, tomorrow. I think we get a few sun breaks tomorrow. I think the daytime weather Wednesday, not that bad, but this system comes in Wednesday night and that'll bring us steady rain and some wind in southern Oregon. And then after that, we transition to showers, stronger showers on Thursday. So here's that system in the center of it's heading in to the south of Portland. So the strong winds will all be south of us, but it will be windy on the coast, the southern and central coast tomorrow and into Thursday as that rolls on shore. Rainfall totals will be over half an inch here, but well over an inch in Eugene and down through the Siskiyous and into Medford. So that's where the, the center of that storm will be focused is in southern Oregon. Our high today, 59. You know what that means if we don't make 60? It's the first day this month where we have not reached at least 60 degrees. It's been a warm start to the month so far. OK, let's check out our forecast for you tonight. Down to 45, there'll be a few showers out there, but not a lot. Just generally cloudy and not too windy either. Tomorrow cloudy with the rain will become steady late in the afternoon and evening hours. We should make 60 tomorrow. Only 57 with those strong showers on Thursday. Maybe a thunderstorm there. So again, we could see some hail Thursday. Friday, 60. Saturday, 73. And Sunday is a day at the beach, even if you're in the valley, up to 80 degrees. Some more really nice April weather on tap, Kathy. Who was that baseball autographed by? Because why would you just have a baseball in the newsroom? Um, it was autographed by two guys. Um, it was at a charity function. Hank Bauer and Moose. Moose somebody. Oh, Hank and Moose. Hank Absolutely. And Moose. All right, hold on to that ball. It might be worth something someday. Yeah, I'll hold on to it. <laughs> Thank you, Matt. Sure. All right, so we still have some things to get through tonight. Right? We do. Well, things are settling down tonight, so we catch a breather tomorrow, and then it's uh, all hands on deck for Saturday as we have another very strong, even stronger system coming our way. I'll show you that. Let's take you outside right now in Portland, 57, almost our warmest temperature of the day. That did happen tonight once we lost the east wind and that south wind kicked in. It's only 16 miles an hour. Earlier in the day, Claire McGee sending us some great video from Agate Beach north of Lincoln City. As the winds were cranking up there this afternoon, always love to get viewer pictures and video on the air. So Claire, thanks for sending that in. Don't forget to send us your pictures and video, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, social media, email, however you want to do it. Here's Doppler radar. Look at that heavy rain now just hammering into the Cascades right now. 
Still some heavier showers coming on shore. Not out of the question that we get a thunderstorm at the beach tonight too, just to add to the excitement as if we haven't had enough going on. Rainfall approaching two inches in Portland. That's a record. I just emptied the rain gauge here at KGW. We're the downtown weather station. 1.77 inches breaking a record which had stood since 1908. So we just broke a 108 year old record for downtown Portland rainfall on the state. Pretty amazing. Look at Brookings with over five inches. Had another report from Southern Oregon of over six inches of rain in just 21 hours. So flooding a bit of a concern, obviously. Seas coming up to 20, 21 feet offshore as well. And with high tides, because we have a full moon this weekend, we are likely going to see at least a little bit of flooding or water, salt water coming out of the beaches in places it normally doesn't get. Here's our storm system from tonight. Kind of a double barrel low, which actually saved us from it being even stronger. It's moving north now, so we're going to see the winds ease overnight, but just a little farther to the west. You see this blob of cloudiness here. Remnants from a typhoon named Songda from the Western Pacific, which will redevelop into a new storm, much like the famed Columbus Day storm of 1962. And this is its track. Notice, keep an eye on where all these big wind storms ended up on the coast of Washington, right? I'm going to show you the track of the Saturday storm. Keep that in mind as we look at it. Now, here's the track of the Columbus Day storm itself, a little bit closer. This is from Wolf Breed, University of British Columbia. Track goes right up, very close to Astoria, but offshore. The key to that storm was this was one of its deepest parts, and then it began to weaken even as it moved inland. Well, the storm that's coming our way on Saturday takes a similar track right into the coast of Washington right there. It won't be as strong as the Columbus Day storm in terms of its lowest pressure. That'll help us, but the track is, is really optimal for damaging wind in western Oregon and Washington. And that's why we're so concerned about the strong winds on Saturday. So storm preparation time. You can charge your cell phones. Make sure your devices are charged because we very well may have widespread power outages. Secure the lawn of patio furniture. That'll get blown away. And candles, batteries, gas, things like that that you want to have on hand. Make sure you're, you're loaded up and ready to go as we go rock and roll once again on Saturday. Let's get to Chief Meteorologist Matt Zafino now. And Matt, this storm was bad. It is moving north away from us, mm -hmm. but it could have been a lot worse. Absolutely. You know, the storm actually didn't get as strong as some of our guidance suggested it would. Certainly not nearly as strong as the Columbus Day storm. However, you talked about the damage, and here are the wind gusts. Portland Airport had a gust of 53 miles an hour. That's our strongest wind gust of the year out at the airport. Garibaldi on the coast, 77 miles an hour. Yaha at 69. Shoals, which is just north of Newburgh, 61 miles an hour. That was at elevation, though, about 1,350 feet. And speaking of elevation, Mary's Peak in the coast range west of Corvallis, that's at 4,100 feet. Clock to gust there of 102 miles an hour. How about that? Now, this is super interesting. It's the radar loop from earlier in the day when the storm was moving north past the Oregon coast and up along the Washington coast. And because it was so close to the coast, the Washington coastal radar could actually see the rain wrapping around the entire center of the storm. See that donut hole? That's the center of the storm. We usually don't get this because they usually don't come within radar range so close. So it was really interesting to see that. Coming up a little later, I've got a three-day satellite loop that shows the entire evolution of this storm from what was once Typhoon Songda into the storm that hit us today. We'll touch on that a little bit later on. But I want to show you radar right now because we're getting lightning strikes off the coast by Pacific City. We've got video of some of those flashes. We'll share that with you later on, too. And the good news is the high wind warnings all canceled. The only warning of concern is a coastal flood advisory for Pacific County. I'll tell you why we've got that up. And, of course, take a look at the rest of your weekend a little later. Nina, back to you. All right, Matt, thanks. We'll see you in a few. We're all kind of breathing a sigh of, you know, come on down yeah. from the storm now tonight. Cozy Which is great. Night. It is. You know, it's still blustery out there, and yeah. it will be tomorrow, but nothing like what we had earlier in the day. And then we had this happening this evening. Lightning strikes off of Pacific City. Wait for it. There you go. Ooh. Isn't that cool? Nice to see them well offshore. You can see what's neat about this is how it's illuminating the thunderheads out there as well. Kind of fun to see, and I'll show you the radar with the lightning strikes in just a minute. Earlier in the evening, we captured this from Pacific City, a great sunset, and you can see those big thunderheads out here in this little crease between the cloud cover right there. You see them growing, but look at the great color. Look at all the storm watchers that are out looking at the big swells and the wild weather out at the beach. Now, this storm 
as you probably heard if you've been watching the last few days, was born from the remains of a typhoon named Songda that was way out in the western Pacific, traveled all the way across the ocean. This is a three day satellite loop going back to Wednesday, Thursday, Thursday afternoon, and you can see the evolution of this. I'm going to point it out to you right here. It's this blob of cloud right here, comes on down, moves on down, and then it develops this morning and turns into this big swirl that rolled right up our coast. We'll go through this one more time. This shading that's going across is just because of the satellite imagery itself and different lighting on it. But nonetheless, you can see that used to be a typhoon in the Western Pacific right there, redeveloped off our coast and created the windstorm that we had today. So sort of fun to see that three day evolution of the storm itself. Now here's Doppler radar and we'll zoom in. Just a great experience watching a brand new weather satellite get launched. So exciting and Matt, we're looking forward to that time lapse you promised us. Yeah, it is really, really cool. Um, Laurel, we'll show that to you in just a second. So many people here are so excited about this. It's been decades literally in the making and if you've ever seen scientists get worked up, they get worked up over this. Here's that time lapse. They took us out to where we could actually see this happen. We were about a couple of miles away when we watched the actual rocket. It's an Atlas V rocket. The top of it carries the satellite, Gozar satellite, the next generation of weather satellites. And it moved from the VIF, <coughs> pardon me, the uh, vertical integration facility onto the actual launch pad where it sits right now, ready to go, waiting for that launch time tomorrow of 2.52 p.m. Portland time. And you can watch that on KGW.com. Go to news links and we have a link to NASA TV where the launch will be streamed live. So you can definitely watch that there. And then after it moved into position, they took us to where we could actually get within a couple of hundred yards of it. I posted uh, Facebook Live and a lot of social media on that. If you want to see those pictures, go check that out as well. So if you're planning on traveling over the mountain passes, especially on Thursday, it will be snowing up there. Make sure you're prepared for that. And then a break as we go deeper into the holiday weekend. So that's our Portland weather again. We're very excited for the launch, 2.52 tomorrow. Uh, Portland time, I'll be watching it from on top of that building, the Vehicle Assembly Building, which should be an amazing view. And I'll be posting on social media throughout the afternoon as we approach the launch, through the launch, and then be on our news 5 o'clock tomorrow afternoon afterwards. Ladies? Matt, we have a question for you. The project manager was saying that the satellite is going to help save lives. When will we start seeing the first pictures from it? So we'll get the first images probably in about four to six months where we actually get some pictures. Those will basically be test images. They have to do some incredible validation and calibration of the data. They don't even turn on the sensors until they're sure that there's no like weird, you know, electromagnetic field running around. They don't want to burn out any systems because once it's up there, it's up there. So they make sure that the, everything is cool. Everything's been grounded. They start getting images, they test and they calibrate. So we'll begin to see maybe the first image or two in about four or six months. It should become fully operational in an, actually about a year. It'll take that long. How's the weather there, Matt? Uh, the weather here? Yeah. The weather, yeah, oh, it's been beautiful. We've had sunshine, temperatures in the 70s, but and up to about 80. You can tell though I'm wearing a jacket. It's been cooling off at night. The biggest difference, the humidity. Everything gets really dewy this time of the night. The weather for the launch looks great. It should be sunny tomorrow, up around 80. The winds will be light. There's a cold front coming down, but that'll be post-launch. So right now, it looks like all systems go weather-wise for the launch. How ironic would it be if there was a weather delay on the launch. This actually was already delayed a couple of weeks because of Hurricane Matthew. After that blew through this area, they had to retest all the systems, make sure everything was good and in proper working order. They call it a probability of violation, POV. There's only a 10% chance of a probability of violation, be it weather, lightning, anything like that tomorrow. So, so far, fingers crossed, we're looking good. Hope to see a big old blast of this tomorrow, 242, 252 Portland time, ladies. I love props, Matt. I love them. Make it do that again. <laughs> we are looking forward to it. I'll bring it. you something home. Yeah. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, Matt, Matt, live at Cape Canaveral.